Hello, Max. Well, you know I never like the Skype or whatever, so this is more than a little weird. But since the phones and internet went down, this is it. I really don't like seeing my own face staring back at me, so I made a bit of an effort. This is not what I looked like an hour ago. Actually, it's the first time I've put on any makeup in weeks. Nothing to be done about these moods, though. So silly to be vain. When... Anyway, I'm not worried. I'm sure you're all right. It's just been a few weeks now, and I miss being able to talk with you. I'm not sure how things are over there now. News here are just these scrolls of writing across the screen and I can't read the print, it's so small. But to be honest, I'm not sure I really want to anymore. And all they're giving us by way of entertainment are endless reruns of the Antiques Roadshow and the odd situational comedy, which I never much liked the first time round. Just a load of old rubbish, really. But there's something quite comforting in thinking that everyone else out there is watching the same old rubbish along with you. Of course, everything's rationed now. Entertainment, electricity, food. Since the riots and then the curfew. Actually, it's delivery day today. I'm expecting mine any minute now. John, that's the rather handsome young cadet who brings me my veggies and what have you. He always calls up to me from the patio, lets me know how the neighbours are doing. Evelyn was the first to go, and you know that. But actually, there's no one left at number four, number eight, and number ten. I'm not sure whether they've gone to live with relatives or... And after Evelyn went, Susie and Timothy went down with her on her ride. And Gwen's been rattling around on her own in that huge house since the spring. I never liked her. She was always so mean to be with her. And anyway, she never opens a window to me when I make an effort, so... Beelzebub died in my arms last Saturday. It was really very sudden. It must have been a stroke or something. He was perfectly fine in the morning. We went for our usual slow walk. Slow, you know. God, do you remember how fast he used to be? You couldn't catch him on your bike. I keep thinking of the two of you playing hide-and-seek around the house. Anyway, around tea time, he just started howling. The most awful sound. He was walking round and round in circles, and then his legs just gave from under him. I just held him in my arms while he kept crying out in pain. There was nothing I could do. We sat like that all night. I buried him in the morning at the bottom of the garden by the apple tree. I've become ever so lazy since. No reason to go out, really. We are what we have lost. I can't remember where I read that. Where are they? It's a bit late. Sorry. Anyway, not much news here otherwise. I'm sure you're fine. They got themselves organised much more quickly over there, like you said. I know you're taking all the precautions. I just wanted to let you know I'm really proud of you, what you're doing. I just wanted to leave a record in case. <laughs> Hopefully it'll all be over by Christmas and you'll be home and... Sorry. I thought... <laughs> I hope they haven't forgotten I'm still here. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, love you. Well, goodbye for now then. Oh, yeah. Goodbye. <laughs>